everyone. Welcome to my channel, Diamonds and Washi. My name is Katie, and whether this is your first time here or you are back, I am so glad that you're here and a very warm welcome to you. Um, I am here today as a part of the holiday premieres that are going on again this year. So uh, let me just give you a quick, a quick recap of what's going on because, you know, you may have watched some of the other premiere videos so far, or maybe this is your first one. So for the past few years, um, there have been some creators that have helped organize a set of, they've called them Christmas premieres or holiday premieres, where the goal is to uh, just have, at least have, have a creator going live every hour throughout Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. And today that actually has extended into Boxing Day, the day after Christmas. And uh, we know that diamond painting is a hobby that uh, draws many of us in because of, uh, it helps with your mental health and finding community and connection. And uh, for a lot of people, the holidays can be hard for one reason or another. And this is a chance for us to help you feel a little bit less alone. And I really hope that I can be that for you today, or at least keep you company <laughs> um, either way. So uh, there, there is a playlist where you can watch premieres that have already aired, where the replays should be available if you still want to watch. Um, and you know, the schedule of upcoming uh, premieres as well. I'll have that playlist linked in the description box of this video. There will be a lot of helpful links. Um, it's, you know, below this video, depending on if you're on your phone or on the computer, there's either a, little, either a little down pointing arrow or a thing that says like read more and you can tap on that and it'll kind of expand into a number of links. Now, um, if you haven't been to a, a video that is a premiere before, and you're not sure how it works, so it kind of depends on if you're watching live or, as a replay, um, premieres are kind of a combination of the two. Uh, it's it's a pre-recorded video, and so as I'm talking to you, I'm not I'm filming this in advance. It's a, over a week in advance, and so I'm not seeing the live chat and responding to it from the video. But I am planning to actually personally be present in my my um, premiere live chat as it's airing live, and so maybe I'll be talking with you all right at the moment. Um, and then the replay will be available and you can just treat this like like a whip and chat. <laughs> In fact, my weekly whip and chats tend to go up on Mondays and I believe, yeah, that's the day that I'm, I'm scheduled to have this go up. So Merry Christmas to all of you that are celebrating and happy holidays. Um, if you don't necessarily celebrate Christmas, I, like I said, I'm just looking forward to spending some time with you today. I'm going to be doing this kind of whip and chat style and I'm going to be working on one of my uh, current projects and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in just a second but I have I came up with a list of would you rather questions that are all diamond painting related and thought we could go that through that together and you're welcome to answer in the live chat if you want and I encourage you to engage you know if you like with the people that are in that live chat I also totally get it if you're like I am completely wiped out from a day of like holiday celebrations with family. I'm just kicking back and crafting and relaxing. That is completely fine too. That's probably going to be the zone I'm going to be in here shortly. Um, but anyway, I put together some would you rather questions uh, that I thought could be fun. And then I also um, I have a list of tag questions um, that are, I feel like, really good kind of reflective end of the year questions looking back on different diamond painting questions. Um, and these were put together by my friend Anthony from Single and Placing. And of course, you're welcome to answer these too. And if you're watching a replay and you, you know, you're a creator thinking of starting a channel and you feel like just doing a, a whip and chatter video where you respond to either of these would you rathers or to Anthony's tag questions, please, of course, feel feel free to do so. I, I'd love that. I'd love to love to see what you have to say. So what I will be working on and with today, I'm going to be working on the um, Christmas Advent Calendar Kit, or I don't know what they're calling it, the Holiday Advent Kit from Diamond Art Studio UK, and it's a cross-stitch conversion style project. Um, technically, like, uh, this could potentially have a spoiler warning, but by the time this video goes up, we're going to have passed the 25th day, and I'm going to be working on day... 14 with you guys. So uh, hopefully that is okay, but feel free to click away if you, you know, 
if you don't want to want to see this anyway. Um, but then I have this pen is from Norse Alchemist. The tray is from Muni Made. Um, this is, um, even though I'm not going to be using a minder, it's just a cute little companion. This is from Dragons and Beasties, and I converted it into, uh, from a pin into a cover minder. And then I have um, Hot Cocoa Diamond Daughter Sticky Wax that I'll be using in my single placer. And Randa's Crafty Corner Putty in the scent Candy Cane I'll be using in my multi-placer. I actually could really use to refresh both, so I'm going to clean out both these tips and put um, g g give us kind of a clean start here. So anyway... Um, hello and how are you? I hope that you have been having a really nice uh, holiday season so far, whatever that has looked like for you. I will say that as of the time that I am filming this, again, I'm about a week, a little over a week in advance here, I am currently staring down a very large to-do list and wondering, am I going to get all of it done <laughs> in time for Christmas? And um, I did actually make a physical list this year, and I think that was probably a good idea. Uh, but I, I am sort of looking forward to once it actually is the holiday, because then it's like, at this point, when I'm with all of you, I um, you know, it's all done, and hopefully I'm just, I'm just relaxing. Uh, we're going to spend... Christmas Eve with some local family, which I'm really looking forward to. But then Christmas Day is just going to be um, the four of us, my husband and our two kiddos. And um, I'm I'm really just doing a really easy little dinner at home, <laughs> courtesy of, of Trader Joe's, really. Uh, so anyway, let me go ahead and take a look at the Would You Rathers that I put together. Well, after I, I like, I'm struggling, riding the struggle bus with this putty today. My goodness. The weather here has been, um, it's, it's shifting into, we're getting rain. I live in Southern California. And so rain is a bit of a novelty here. Uh, we don't get it terribly often. Um, and when we do, it's kind of like, <laughs> no one knows what to do. People don't know how to drive in it. Um, I grew up in Ohio, so I learned to drive in all kinds of wild weather. Um, but I think that sometimes when the weather shifts, sometimes that affects how my waxes and putties behave. So uh, it's one of the reasons that I highly encourage you if you are um, struggling to find or struggling to make a wax or a putty work for you, try out some different different options because different ones will work you know, from different companies or even different sort of versions from different companies will function better or worse in different climates than others. Um, and I even will use sometimes different putties or waxes seasonally. Like in the summer, there are some that I'll avoid and, you know, vice versa. So um, I have learned a lot about doing a cross-stitch conversion project since... Uh, well, I should say specific to this kit. I've learned a lot about working on this mystery conversion kit from this advent kit from um, Diamond Art Studio UK. As I've gone, I've been um, having to sort of adjust and learn a bit as we go. I'm just pulling out my tablet to pull up my chart. Did I already upload day 14? I think I did. Okay, perfect. Um, and so... I just, I feel like I'm a lot more efficient with it than I used to be. I already pre-cut this section. Um, I just recovered it because I ended up not working on it when I thought I was going to. But um, I do have a playlist dedicated to working on uh, different cross-stitch conversion projects, various cross-stitch conversion projects that I have worked on, and uh, my learnings as I've gone. So feel free to take a look at that. If you are wanting to learn more and you're like, what is a cross-stitch conversion? It is where I'm actually reading a cross-stitch chart and turning it into a diamond painting on a blank canvas here. And this one is particularly unique because it is each each day is kind of a mystery. Um, and so even the chart itself is in black and white. And so sometimes I don't even know what the image is going to be until <laughs> I've, I've gotten a little further into painting it. I'm not going to show you the chart because um, copyright, but <laughs> I it is just it is all in black and white. So I'm first going to do this outline, which there's this purple AB outline around each of the sections and we'll get started. So feel free to let me know down in the live chat or if you're watching the replay in the comment section 
what you are currently up to if you're working on a project or if you're just kicking back and uh, relaxing are you doing christmas cleanup um <laughs> i think that that that'll be a big part of my day is just the the tidying up of the chaos especially with with two little ones anyway like i said let, let's take two and dive into the would you rathers so um of course i want to just pop in a little little note up front that um uh, like none of these are <laughs> correct over the other this is all completely up to your personal preference and opinion and i i'm sure that no one is going to try to shade anyone else or make anyone else feel bad in the in the live chat or the comments but of course just you know respect that everyone has different sort of thoughts and preferences and opinions and stuff anyway the first would you rather i feel like is one of sort of the quintessential like diamond painting questions i see it it's probably the most frequently asked question i see in groups and that is do you prefer working with rounds or squares um as in you know diamond paints with round or square shapes <laughs> i i will say for myself i it's a cop-out answer i will own that this is a bit of a cop-out of an answer i need both in my life i really really need to have both in my life if i if i go too long like too many projects in a row of working with one drill shape uh i crave working with the other one i really enjoy the level of detail that you can get with um, square drills and the way that square drill paintings look when they're completed is just very um it's it's a bit smoother i guess because you aren't seeing any of the canvas you're just seeing a flat you know surface of, of drills and I, I like that and I feel like there are certainly a lot of paintings that really lend itself to lend themselves to square drills specifically um, but I really enjoy oh I need to mark this off I forgot to do that um, I also really enjoy working with round drill diamond painting kits because they will go faster um, and there is something that to me is just a little bit more relaxing about working on a round drill kit. And then depending kind of on the company too, sometimes I feel like round drills can actually have a bit of a, I kind of like the sparkle that they give compared to square drills. So really I just, I need, I need both in my life. <laughs> uh, there was a period in October and November that I was basically only working on square drill kits and it was a lot of large square drill kits too. And I then after that, I uh, worked on a round drill kit and I was like, oh, this is like a breath of fresh air and it's so nice. It's going faster. And yeah, so that's just every time I think, oh no, if I had to just pick one, I could, I go, no, I don't think I could. <laughs> if I had to, if I absolutely had to, it would probably have to be squares though, I think. Um, next one, do you prefer to work on, would you rather work on a small kit or a snack size kit, like little, little quick and little, or just isn't, even if it's not quick, it's a smaller kit or a really large kit. Um, I certainly find myself gravitating towards larger kits, but I also will then very quickly complain and burn out. <laughs> about doing too many large drill kits or large size kits. One, two, three, four, five. I'm trying to like talk and count at the same time. It's a bit of a challenge. Um, okay, it should be easier now. Um, I I don't want to cop out and say that I need both. I This is less of a I need both than it was with round and square shaped diamonds. Um, but I do find that I can't work on too many huge kits or I'll just... I'll feel frustrated, like I don't have momentum and like I can't get a finish to save my life. So I, yeah, no, I need both, but I like large ones because I want to get that detail, you know? So that's that's probably where I would land with that. In, the, in, in a perfect world though, I love when I can work on more of a, to me what feels like more of a medium size kit, which for me would be somewhere in the like 50-ish by 70-ish centimeter range it's it's just it's a nice a nice size um so that's how i would answer that one 
Um, next, would you rather have one whip going or multiple at a time? Um, some people I know are very adamant that like I can only do one whip at a time. I only whip is work in progress. I only work on one diamond painting project at a time, start to finish, and then I can kit up and do the next one and so on and so forth. And then there are people on the other end of the spectrum that will be like, oh, I have, you know, 10 whips going. If I, if I get a kit and I feel like working on it, I just, I kit it up and I might work on a section and then I don't touch it again for a few months or, or something like that. So which do you prefer? Which would you rather? I, um, I, if I had to pick between the two, I would say I'd rather just have one kit going. Um, but I do find that I average out having two, maybe three whips going at a time, any more than that. And I f start to feel overwhelmed and start to feel kind of twitchy. Like, Ooh, I'm not, I, I have too many going. I need to, I need to, you know, pare this down and really work towards getting some of these finished. And like I said, I'm coming fresh off of that sort of experience where I had multiple, multiple whips going that were all ended up being sort of months long kits in October to November maybe a little bit into December. So, um, yeah. <laughs> now, would you rather work on, okay, I, I was debating how to decide on genres for this question. And these I feel like are two popular gen genres, but, uh, you can also answer just with what your preferred genre in general is to work with, even if it isn't one of these two, but just for sake of like, kind of going with opposites here in my mind what are opposites are would you rather work on a diamond painting that ha is a landscape like is an outdoorsy theme or is more of like a portrait or has people in it which would you rather do which would you rather work on I <laughs> If, if you are no stranger to my channel which I you know I hope that there's lots of new faces here that would be really delightful um I, uh, if you've been around for a little bit, uh, you probably have heard me talk about how I just am so not a landscape person. This one is a very easy answer for me. Uh, give me people and portraits or, or fantasy elements really, uh, all day. I will every once in a blue moon go, do I want to try working on a landscape again? And occasionally we'll try it. And usually I end up regretting it and being like, what was I thinking? Like, I know I'm not a landscape person. Like, why, why would I do that? Um, I think it's, a, for me, it's a mix of the colors in landscapes that are generally in landscapes don't tend to appeal to me as much, like greens and browns. And I also, I don't know, I suppose the process of seeing a landscape kit come together, it's it's more of a like slow burn uh, with with kind of paintings with people or other elements in them. You often get to see, I feel like just things come together more quickly. Like you might open up a section or there's something new in every section or something like that. Though landscapes, I just, I don't find myself having the same experience. And so I'm not drawn to them. But if you, if you love them, I love it for you. And I am just thrilled that there really are so many so many options out there. I think that that is, um, that is one of the best things about, about the craft, especially as, as it's grown and, uh, you know, more new shops are opening and stuff as there's just, there's more and more, more, there are more and more options available to us. So anyway, like I said, feel free to also just share what your favorite genre is, even if it's not one of those two. <laughs> um, Okay, this next one. Would you rather listen to an audiobook or have a show on in the background while you're diamond painting? I feel like these are two of the most common things I see people saying that they are doing while diamond painting. And it could be a TV show or it could be like a YouTube video, I suppose. Um, and I just am curious to see where you guys land kind of on that spectrum. Uh, for me, it really depends on the day and my mood. I have gone through major audiobook phases. I actually, um, my friend Jacqueline had really sort of 
nudged me to try audiobooks was it maybe just a year ago almost a year ago at this point and that has felt like it's just sort of opened up a, a whole new world of possibilities for me I, I had found before that I could not listen to like just sit and listen to an audiobook without doing anything else but um like when I had tried audiobooks like in the past uh but I realized that oh trying it while diamond painting it's not like I'm just sitting there listening to an audiobook my hands are busy and actually it it works really well so uh but then I I don't know probably more often I have tv shows on or youtube videos on in the background instead um so I just I I do both it just depends on on the day and on on my mood now would you rather work with just the basic tools that come with a diamond painting kit or do you like to work with all of the upgrades and accessories um i know that there are a lot of people that just say hey you know i i don't want to spend extra money i love just i love that the, the the kits come with what i need and i just work with that it's totally fine um and then there are others and i am the guilty one here i feel like I just have so much fun collecting and using accessories. There are certain accessories that I do feel like are uh, especially helpful. Uh, Things like I feel like an upgraded pen. For me, it's much more ergonomic and comfortable than the basic pens that come with kits. I really love a larger tray for multi-placing. And, but there are other things like if I really had to just work with pink wax, I could. Um, and I totally see the benefit of not <laughs> not spending a lot more money and just working with a basic toolkit. So that's totally valid. Um, now, would you rather have a big stash or a little, a little stash? And there will be no, no stash shaming, you guys. <laughs> no stash shaming. Um, and the, again, this is one of those things where I do see, I see both sides of it, where a lot of people will say, oh, I... I want to have a big stash because I'm worried that things are going to get discontinued. And um, I like being able to shop from my stash basically whenever I'm kind of in the in different moods to work on different diamond paintings. And I see some people say that also similar to my mentality with wanting to only have a limited number of whips going at a time. Some people feel like a large stash is, is too overwhelming and they'd prefer or or any other other number of valid reasons they would just prefer to have a smaller stash um i have a very large stash uh i've been diamond painting for almost four years now (laughs) and i do complete diamond paintings quickly and i also still feel like i am suffering from (laughs) a tiny bit of i mean this is a very casual use of the term Um, A tiny bit of like PTSD from COVID diamond painting where uh, there was such a shortage on everything. It was so hard to get your hands on diamond paintings and everything was real backlogged and slow to ship. So I think in large part because of that, I still have kind of a holdover of like, well, I just I want to have plenty of options. (laughs) I want to be able to work on a kit based on what sort of strikes my my mood at the time when I'm ready to out a new kit um would you rather um section off your diamond painting into like neat even sections or would you rather just kind of freehand it you just peel back the plastic you go and you fo- you follow your nose and stop where where the lord tells you to i don't know <laughs> you just stop where you feel like it um I definitely like to section off my paintings. I will actually pull out a measuring tape and use a calculator to figure out roughly um, how to have an kind of even number of sections uh, that are all about the same size um, and in sort of the size range of section that I like to work with. So that's that's my preferred way to do it. You can see even just with this like cross stitch conversion, I gridded this off because it makes it a lot easier to read and to keep up with. So give me all of the all of the organizational uh, approaches to diamond painting. <laughs> now, a uh, related question is: Would you rather work with washi tape or with release paper? Um, I I like both, but I do find myself 
reaching for sectioning off with washi tape more than release paper. There's some like really, really cute release paper, like printed release paper out there. Um, hold on a second. I feel like I messed this up. I did. I forgot to do a whole section. Right. Okay. That's fine. Not a huge deal. Um, let me just check really quick and then this is going to go all the way down. I need to add one more. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I, I do tend to reach for washi tape. It's a little funky shaped, uh, more than release paper, but I like that there are those options. Release paper would maybe be more efficient, like faster. So yeah. Um, if you are an accessories person, would you rather have and work with a thick or a thin pen? Yes, hand turned diamond painting pens come in sort of a variety of shapes and sizes and thicknesses. And uh, for me, I really need like a middle of the road pen. If I work with, I, I've tried some really thicker turned pens um, because I was curious to see if those would be more comfortable to diamond paint with. And I struggle with too thick of a pen. But similarly, a too skinny of a pen doesn't, like that doesn't quite work for me either. So this is like very much like a medium thickness in, in terms of turning. So this is definitely what I will find myself uh, reaching for and ordering from, from pen shops. Um, I really need to do another an updated pen stash video. It's been a long time since my last one. And um, yeah, I should really do one. I love my diamond painting pens. <laughs> Next up, okay, this is one that I am really curious about. So would you rather, or just as far as how do you, as when it comes to diamond painting, um, would you rather refer to the legend on the canvas? This is while you're actually diamond painting. Like you see a symbol on the canvas and then you go and you look at the legend to find that symbol and then you go look and find the diamonds that you need. Like, do you just have the diamonds, whether they're by DMC code or like the legend number, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, et cetera. Which do, do you, do you prefer to do that or to just um, kit up your diamonds and have the symbols on the containers and you never look at the legend? I fall into the second camp. I basically never look at the legend like at all and that's actually something that I have to keep keep in mind and remind myself of when I'm, I'm unboxing or reviewing paintings because I know that that does matter to some people they they will like they they really rely on referring to the legend on a canvas like that's just part of how they diamond paint um but you know for me personally I just couldn't care less about you know, how the legend is oriented and where it's placed on a canvas. I think especially because if, I feel like if you're working on a really large canvas, it's inefficient to, for me anyway, just how I set up to, if I'm working on a section in the middle of the large canvas to have to like go in <laughs> way over, you know, a couple feet to go look at the, the legend and find this symbol and then get the color, um, especially in like really high confetti kits or really high color count kits. But I don't know. I'm always I'm always curious to to hear people's response to this one. So, legend or just the containers? Um, I hope that question made sense. <laughs> and then, I think I think this is maybe the last one that I came up with for would you rather's. Um, so would you rather if you have a a project going? and you're finding that you really do not like working on it, whether it's, oh, the materials are bad or the the subject matter just is not calling my name anymore, any number of reasons. So say you have a whip that that's the case. You're like, I just, I don't wanna work on this anymore for any number of reasons. Would you rather toss it and just say, okay, I'm not, I'm just never gonna work on this. I'm, I'm getting rid of it or well, this okay. This will be a three-parter. Okay, so would you rather do that, or, you know, put it away and maybe return to it at a later date, or do you power through and just finish it because you're like, I just, I need to, I need to finish it and have it done and over with. Which of those things would be your approach? <laughs> um, it depends for me. I've only had one kit that has ever. Oh, that's, that's a lie. Okay. There have been two kids. 
<laughs> and I'll explain both. So one kit, I actually did a video here on my channel explaining why I was um, putting this kit on an indefinite hiatus. And it was ultimately because the materials were very, very, very challenging to work with. And I just couldn't, I couldn't do it anymore. It was actually my first pass at a cross stitch conversion project. Um, and that one I have said is in on indefinite hiatus. There is definitely a bug in the back of my brain that goes someday, someday I am going to replace the materials for that and ultimately finish it. But I don't know when that's going to be. I think it's going to be a while uh, because I have another really large scale cross stitch conversion project that has been going on for like a year and a half at this point. And I don't see myself going back to the very first one that I've indefinitely tabled um, for, I, I don't know, I think that's gonna be a long time. But I just, there's a part of me that goes, I don't like having unfinished business. I'd really like to finish that. Um, if it's a canvas that I just am finding that I'm not enjoying working on as much, it kind of depends. I, I've i never straight up thrown a project away. Um, I have just, yeah, either tabled it and pulled out some other projects to work on and then worked on that uh, the other kit in small doses. But ultimately, I guess I probably would land on in the camp of powering through. Um, the second kit that... I, this is this was a weird one. So the second kit, this was three years ago now. Um, I tried working on a kit from um, it was not a, it, it yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was not a small shop. I'm not gonna try to like slander anyone. Um, it was it was a Dreamer Designs kit, but I had an allergic reaction to the glue. Something in the glue or the canvas. I tried working on it. Um, like four or five different times over the course of a few weeks. And every single time when I would start to work on it, my eyes would swell up and get red. Um, and my my eyes, like I would start like tearing up and feeling like my my I couldn't breathe super well. I was like, this is so strange. I've never heard of anyone else having this happen to them. There has to be just something weird about the materials that my body is reacting to. And then so for obvious reasons, like I got maybe half a section into that kit and I I gave it to a friend. I was like, I, I cannot, I literally cannot work on this. I'm having an allergic reaction to it. So I, uh, yeah, this was three years ago. I think I'd been diamond painting for, I don't know, a few months. So that happened. <laughs> but that again, I feel is kind of an, uh, unusual circumstance. <laughs> That's not really the the main reason I was asking. I was asking the question. But anyway, that's kind of the end of the would you rathers. I um I had actually meant to do at the beginning sort of a little like intro and about me in case you were new and you know haven't seen my channel or or anything like that before. I um which I'll go ahead and just pop that in now I suppose and then I'll get into the tag questions from Anthony, but I think I need to open up another bag of this color first. 210. Okay, this is gonna be a staticky one. Let me see. These look staticky. Let's see. <clears throat> um, so yeah, uh, my name is Katie, <laughs> and I have been diamond painting for uh, almost four years. It'll be four years in April, and I started diamond painting during uh, the pandemic as just sort of a I need something to do because I'm stuck at home and. Uh, it was one of those things where I had seen a lot of Facebook ads for diamond painting. It was a lot of kind of the ASMR style videos and it looked so soothing and intriguing to me. I was like, oh, I, I want to try that. So I did what probably a lot of us <laughs> do whenever we, we see something like that. And I've heard other people say as much. I went to Amazon and typed in like paint by diamond or, or something and tried to find something that had two day, two day shipping. Um, and it was not a licensed kit, sadly, but I, again, I feel like that's how a lot of us start out. And once you know better, you can, you know, make different choices. But, um, and it was like, basically from the moment I got the kit and started working on it, I just knew I'm like, oh, this is going to be it. I had tried other crafts before, like cross stitch, um, and paint by number. And there were just various reasons why those weren't crafts that I felt myself really, really sucked into. Um, cross stitch is just, it's a little bit more mental work, I feel like. And um, you don't like get the satisfaction of a finished project nearly as quickly, uh, paint by number, and even like puzzles. I really, really love doing puzzles, but I live in a small space and I have two little ones. And so 
any crafting that I do, like right now I'm actually at my kitchen table and I need to be able to easily kind of pack up and put away um, anything that I'm working on, um, both, you know, to like have meals and do things with my kids. Um, and also just like, you know, if my, my kids need me or my kids come over, especially when they're, they are little ones, um, I say, I don't want them to get into stuff that they, they shouldn't be getting into, um, messing with, you know, crafting stuff. So, but diamond painting, I just realized I'm like, oh, this ticks all the boxes. And I kind of dived in head first and I, um, you know, I was really craving connection and missing in person, um, friendships and interaction and thought, uh, I, you know, I was posting some of my diamond painting projects to my personal social media, like time lapses and stuff like that. But I kind of felt like, you know, most of the people that are on my, those, those personal social media pages are there for my, to see like my kids and stuff about life, like not stuff about crafting. And so I took a peek over on Instagram to see, is there like, is diamond painting on Instagram a thing? Like, are there people that, um, have diamond painting accounts. Like I just wanted to see it was out there and I realized, oh no, there totally is. And it seems like it's kind of rapidly growing because lots of us have discovered this craft because of, you know, being stuck at home. So I started an Instagram page and connected with a lot of people that way. Um, and then I had really been enjoying doing some kind of like short form reviews and stuff on Instagram and was at the time, at least there was a, what was that time limit for videos? It was shorter and I was a little bit frustrated with it, like as a, as a medium to post reviews. And I had had people telling me like, oh, you've got a nice voice to listen to and you, you do, you know, reviews well, you should start a YouTube channel. And I... I just was not into YouTube. Hold on a second. I did that wrong. Um, I was not like an avid watcher of YouTube at all <laughs> at that point. I was kind of like, I don't know. That feels like, you know, I don't, I don't know what I'd be doing. Um, I'd be kind of stepping out of my lane. But I thought, well, I'll just use it as kind of a spot to, to, to put videos instead of Instagram. <laughs> and then, you know, the rest, I guess, is kind of history. I started my channel in, I think, September of 2020. And I just kind of followed my nose and try, just tried to be really um, like authentic and unbiased and thought I just want to try out like a variety of different companies and products. And I just, I want to be helpful. I want to help, help people um, either, you know, find ways to make this craft easier and more enjoyable and or help them with like sort of deciding how, how and where to spend their money. Um, and... Yeah, so, and I absolutely, I love it. I love it. I've had my channel for over three years now. And um, thank you guys so much for for being here. Feel free to subscribe, by the way, if you're not subscribed. I try to do a lot of uh, tutorials and unboxings and reviews and, and small shop hauls and all those kinds of things. And, um, and would love to have you here, so... Feel free, feel free to join me. Um, as far as, yeah, I, I guess that's kind of the main stuff, like kind of about me as crafting. I, I gravitate towards a lot of kind of fantasy artwork and, uh, you know, kind of portrait style, like with women especially, I feel like is what I reach for. And I have like a little bit of a reputation for being a speedy diamond painter, but I also just, I try to just enjoy the craft and not worry about how fast it's going, especially on, on, uh, when I'm in a phase where it feels like things are taking me a little longer than they otherwise, otherwise would be. Um, but yeah, I, I'm 35 and I have, I have two young kiddos. Um, they have special needs, but they are absolutely amazing. And I love them with my whole heart. And I've been married for uh, 13 years and I live in sunny Southern California. Like I mentioned, mentioned earlier, so that's a little little bit about me. Um, let me go ahead and pull up these tag questions. Again, these came from Anthony from Single and Placing. He has a YouTube channel. He um, uh, is is was my co-host this past year for Summer with a Masters, an event that that we put on. And I'm already kind of like looking ahead a little bit to. Okay, we're getting into 2024. Time to start. <laughs> Wondering if it's time to plan for 
the next summer with the masters but um anyway thanks to anthony for putting these questions together and for for tagging me in them um, again you guys feel free to answer along in the comments or if you're watching the replay um or you, ha you have a channel or whatever you are uh, welcome to answer these as well so consider this a tag your it <laughs> so these questions i feel like were a lot of reflections on the year as far as diamond painting goes and i did try to take a look at them ahead of time so that i could try to formulate some some thoughts instead of just trying <laughs> to think about it, answer them on the fly uh so the first question is what was your favorite overall kit of the year that you worked on whether it's a whip or a finish um, and I actually, <clears throat> I did go back and pull out my, my diamond painting logbook, which I show this just briefly in like my post review videos. Oh, I know we're zoomed in a little bit, but I, let me find one that's like this year. So like, let's see my first kit of the year. I started the year off with this really pretty kit called Deity of the Forgotten. And in my logbook, I track things like, you know, the size and the drill shape and everything. And I write down like what day I started and finished it. And I like to track things like what, no I don't know why I just track what number start it is, but like what number finish overall it was. And then also the finish for the year. And then I write things like, you know, loved and met and notes. So like this was my first kit from Uni Made, and here's some things that I, you know, loved and things that I was not so sure about. Um, so I was kind of flipping back through this and I'm kind of prepping for like a year in review video I'm gonna do. It's like, what would I say that, like I wanna make sure I'm not forgetting any kits that I might say would otherwise be my favorite kit of the year. Um, I, I think it has to be though, I think it's gotta be my inner sanctuary, um, largely because it just has so much meaning to me. This is by Yume Art, it is from Diamond Art Club and I, I play piano and have for um, almost 30 years. And so this artwork, I was just dreaming of it becoming a kit from Diamond Art Club <laughs> and was so, so, so incredibly happy when it did and worked on it right away. And it came out around my birthday. So it just all felt like all the perfect and wonderful, wonderful things. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's, prob that's what I would have to say was probably my my favorite I'm flipping back through okay okay yeah so I think that was probably my favorite kit of the year um the runner-up for my favorite kit of the year would probably be glorious purpose and um this one because Loki is just really one of my uh very very favorite characters and sort of fandom period and when Diamond Art Club licensed with Marvel I just, I could not believe it. I was so excited. Uh, this is also one that I actually challenged myself and did a bunch of crystal swaps um, in the stone and in the infinity stone. And I, you know, noted all of that. So it was like, I just dove in head first with this kit and it brought me so much joy. I feel like that was kind of my, my big, my main gauge for how I determined what my favorite kit of the year would be was just sort of, what did I love every moment of working on and those those were two of them but there were there were a lot of others I really loved too so it's it was hard to narrow that one down it was hard um the second question was what was your favorite event of the year like fi favorite diamond painting event um, a lot of people host events throughout the year there are some good resources out there for places you can find lists of the events on like Instagram or Facebook and um there's a, there's a diamond painting events, Facebook group, and then there's a couple of Instagram accounts that, um, track, track events on Instagram too. So, um, feel free to check those out. I am involved with hosting a couple of events, uh, summer with the masters, which centers around old masters artwork. Um, really common artists that you would associate with that would be like Van Gogh or Monet or something like that. Um, I've hosted that for a few years now and, um, and then Drills and Chills, I have hosted for three years. Um, and I think Drills and Chills, I mean, I feel bad to say it's my own event is my favorite event of the year, but there's just something that's really nostalgic and wonderful about Drills and Chills. And it's such a fun community event. I really like fall weather and Halloween things. And so um, 
I just, I love fall. I love the actual fall as a season and pumpkin everything. So I feel like drills and chills is probably my favorite event of the year. Kind of a follow-up question to that that Anthony had put was, what's your favorite kit that you worked on for an event this year, either completed or as a whip? Um, I, I have to say that I adored working on the kit Plant Witch by Geneva Bowers from Distracted by Diamonds for drills and chills. It was unfortunately, it's a discontinued kit. Um, but it was, it was just so, so, so pretty to work on. It was the kit that I bought back in 2020 and it had been in my stash for a while. And what I would call one of my, my rainy day kits, which is kind of a term that I kind of came up with and use for kits to have some kind of special meaning to me for any number of reasons. And I, they're part of my rainy day stash. So it's like I'm saving them really to work on um, and until a time where it just feels meaningful or it feels like, I don't know, sometimes it's like I need a pick me up. Um, any number of reasons. <laughs> I might be like, okay, it's time to work on a kit from my rainy day stash. So that was, that was one of them. And it was, you know, it was sad to finish that one. But it's Distracted by Diamonds has really nice quality. Even like back in 2020 when they were one of the first small shops out there that was doing licensed diamond painting kits um i just i really really enjoyed enjoyed working on that one um the next question number four was what's your favorite overall shop of the year big or small you guys <laughs> i am gonna give you like the absolute biggest cop-out answer ever here and i just i literally when i was taking notes and writing my answers i just wrote nope <laughs> not answering that <laughs> um one of the reasons is because I know that I, I do have a platform here and I'm afraid to sort of, not afraid, okay, not afraid. It's more that like there are truly so many amazing options out there that I couldn't possibly do it justice to name all of them. Um, I'm afraid I would forget someone. I don't want to hurt feelings. I don't want, you know, any any of that. <laughs> um and so I'm, I'm going to take a huge cop out on this one. But I will say that if you take a look at just the the kits you, you see me unbox frequently on my channel and uh, reviewing and like completing, um, that'll give you a sense for the companies maybe that I gravitate towards. And also like it, to please take a look at my small shop haul playlist, which I will really try to remember to link in the description of this video. Please take a look at that playlist to really see a wide variety of small shops that are out there. There are so, so many and they're doing amazing things. And this community is so much better for all the amazing small shop owners that are a part of it. And so I will just do a mass shout out to all small shops in our community. <laughs> so uh, my apologies, but feel free if you have ones that you want to share about in the live chat or in the comments, you're absolutely welcome to do so. <laughs> Um, the next question was, who is your favorite artist of the year? And this one, I could not narrow it down to one. I had a couple of honorable mentions. Um, but I, I said probably Chris Abug was my favorite artist this year. I am finding myself really drawn to her artwork and art style. I feel like I could just do a whole year of just working on Chris Abug kits. I love mythology. I love the way that she just draws um, people and subjects and everything. And I really love how it looks as diamond paintings too. Um, so Chris Abug. And then also Martith Art, uh, who, so Chris Abug is licensed with uh, Diamond Art Club and Martith Art is licensed with Jaded Gem Shop. And I really, really love Martith Art's style. She has a lot of really cute foxes, which I adore. And um, I've worked on a couple of her kits now from, from Jade to Gem Shop. And I, they just bring me so much joy. And she seems like such a sweetheart as an artist, too. I really enjoy following artists on Instagram and, you know, seeing their work and um, if they share with about their process and, and whatnot. So... That's probably how where I would have to land. Like there are others too. It's like Yume is a close is a close runner up too. Um, it's it's hard and like Ivy Dolomore. Like there's so many. There's so many good ones. And man, I, I'm sure I'm forgetting someone even now. I'm like, oh no, I'm forgetting someone. <laughs> so favorite artist. That's probably what I would go with. Um, 
Next question, number six was, what was your favorite moment from another content creator or video this year? So even if you're not a content creator, was there um, a video that you really enjoyed or a moment from another content creator that you really enjoyed this year? Um, I have been really, really enjoying um, Lizette Crafts and Tells. Lizette has been doing a stash detox for, it's been over two years now, now on her channel where she does like these monthly updates and check-ins. And I, I, I just, I really adore listening to her videos anyway, but I also really admire her for sticking to this detox and she's getting close to finishing it. And I am so curious to see what's going to happen. Like if she's just going to go, go nuts and just buy a ton of kits or if she's going to just be like, no, I'm just kids here and there. I don't know. Um, but it's been really, really neat to sort of be along for that that ride with her and sort of see just what how she's approached that and, you know, the ups and downs that have come with that too. So yeah, that's, that's probably been one of my favorite moments this year. But I also just generally, more generally speaking, I've really enjoyed just trying to listen to and discover a variety of like new creators this year you guys there are always lots of new people joining youtube and making channels um, don't let the number of subscribers that someone has dissuade you from uh, checking out their content because um, everyone has to start somewhere um and i i really enjoy trying to sort of you know discover uh Oh, that just went flying. <laughs> New creators. And I, I'm really partial to things like whip and chats because that's the thing I really enjoy having on in the background while I'm diamond painting. It feels like I have a friend nearby. We're kind of co-working and, and just spending a little time together. And especially I feel like with um, when you listen to the same kind of people as whip and chats like week after week, you really feel like you get to know that person and you look forward to hearing their their updates on life and whatnot. So um, that's just more generally speaking, I've enjoyed that from a variety of, of creators, whether it's like, yeah, whip and chats or vlogs. Um, I'm looking at the time because I know I want to make sure that I have this video short enough that I'm not going to run into the next person. We're good. We're good. I'm watching it. <laughs> I'm going to see if I can finish this, um, this set of tag questions before we hit our end time though. So next question is... Um, this is kind of a spinoff of question four, he says. So it's your favorite small shops of the year. So similar to question four, maybe there's some honorable mentions for this one too. Um, this is another one I really, you guys, I just got to point you to my small shop haul playlist for accessories and also take a look at my unboxings playlist. I really, and even my reviews too, if you want to see completed kits, I really have tried to make it a goal, um, to unbox a wide variety of shops. I even tried to have in my head, like maybe each month I'm trying out, oh, excuse me for yawning, a small shop or a new to me shop. Um, I'm really, I'm trying to, to do that to make sure I'm just, yeah, not missing different things that are out there. So um, yeah, I'll point you to those playlists for, <laughs> for more thoughts on that. Um, number eight was, what was your favorite video that you uploaded this year? Um, this one, actually, this one was not too hard for me. And that's in part because it was a video that I felt like was kind of a long time coming. And I felt like I'd been teasing and working on it for a while and had it in my head for a while. But I put up a video, I think it was in May, that was my top tips for diamond painting more quickly, because that is one of the most kind of frequently asked questions I would get is how do you diamond paint so fast? Do you have any tips to share? And so I finally kind of just was like, all right, let me, let me write, let me start brainstorming. Let me make this video happen. There's no reason why I can't just put it together. And so I did. And I'm, it's a video that I am like really proud of. And I just, you know, I spent a lot of time on it and I feel like it, you know, I think pe people have gotten some helpful information out of it, which is even better. Like that's always my goal. Um, so that one I think would probably be my favorite. <laughs> um, I know if you're listening and you're like, I don't have a channel. I mean, that's, that's totally fine. <laughs> uh, I was trying to think of like an alternative, like answer you could give to that question. I don't, I don't know. I guess just, I don't know, maybe favorite video that you watched, but that's kind of similar to the last question. Anyway, next question. What was your biggest diamond painting letdown of the year? Um, 
this was this was a little bit tough because I was like, oh, I don't want to think negatively. <laughs> but for me, I think it would be, um, it would probably be just sort of getting fatigued on larger kits where I don't feel like this used to be as much of an issue for me, but it seems like this year I was just way, way, way more sensitive to it. Um, where I just would sort of really feel like I was getting way too close to burnout and or actually burning out sometimes on these large kits. And that was, that was a letdown. I, I can, I can go with that as, as my answer. Um, yeah. Cause it's like, I like working on large projects, but also apparently I don't like working on large projects. <laughs> Um, and then the last question was, what was your biggest lesson learned in crafting this year? Um, that's a good, that's a really good question too. And it's, I think you could spin this into like, what am I going to try to do better and or differently in the new year? How can I refresh my mindset about this? Uh, mine would probably be kind of tied into my biggest letdown of the year. And that was just generally like, don't push it. Just take it easy. Make sure you're enjoying what you're doing. This is me saying it to myself. Um, make sure I'm enjoying what I'm doing and um, not just being like, no, I have to push through. No, I have to work on, you know, these kits because I do not want to burn out. I don't want to be annoyed with my crafting and my diamond painting because that is the opposite of why I do it. Um, yeah, I would say that was probably one of my biggest lessons learned. And also just to kind of stay focused. There's a lot of like noise out there. Um, and it just, you know, I try to keep a clear head <laughs> and, and stay focused on like, okay, well, let me focus on crafting and making videos and not shenanigans. <laughs> um, it always, it always pays off. So, um, those are, yeah, those are some of my big, big lessons learned, I suppose. And, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, what I want to go into the new year with is how can I be, uh, make sure that I'm really like enjoying the craft. I still want to work on kits from a variety of shops, try out new things, challenge myself, get outside my comfort zone. Um, and hopefully, you know, review some kits, unbox some kits that will be helpful for you guys. I'm excited to see what new, I'm sure there'll be even more new shops that open up this year, but yeah, you guys, I'm going to go ahead and kind of work on wrapping up this video. So um, there is going to be another video that's going to roll right after this one. I will uh, absolutely have the playlist linked below and I will also try to find out exactly who is going after me and link that not only in the description, but hopefully I'm in the live chat right now sharing that link with you too. And you're welcome to go check out um, the next premiere. And uh, thank you for spending some time with me today. Like I said, please feel free to subscribe if you want to see more diamond painting content. I would absolutely love to have you here. And I genuinely enjoy just getting to hang out with you um, today. So I hope that you are taking care of yourself and having just the most wonderful holiday season ever. And I look forward to spending even more time with you guys in the new year. All right, my friends, I will talk to you again soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.